everyone, welcome back to Face It with Dr. G. I'm Dr. G and I'm so excited to have you back again. I'm going to speak briefly and freely about education. And you all know I'm a huge proponent of education. I love it, I think it's fantastic, I think it's essential, and it's empowering. And I'm a lifelong learner. I hope all of you guys are as well because you're obviously listening to this podcast or watching this YouTube to learn something, right? Or maybe you're just doing it for, uh, for entertainment. I don't really know. But I wanted to talk to you about education because I get a lot of questions about, do I attend a conference? Do I get a private training? Do I go to small group training? Do I go overseas? Do I go to business meetings? It, you know, it's all, there's so much out there and it's growing rapidly. Everyone has a conference. Everyone wants you to come to their conference and you really have to hone in on what's important to you at that specific time because there's pros and cons to all of them. And I pretty much have done it all. So a little bit about how I started, I started going to the larger conferences and they at that time weren't ne nearly as big as they are now. And you have to understand that when you go to these larger conferences at this point, you will get a lot of benefit. You'll have socialization, you'll meet tons of people, you'll go to every booth in those exhibitor halls and connect with tons of reps and companies and get deals on products and learn. And so I think as a newer injector, it's nice to do that to get the entire scope of what you're dealing with. Now it can be very overwhelming and it can feel isolating. And I think some of the conferences now are getting a little bit clicky, so you can feel ostracized. You know, it's, it's not necessarily the most inclusive environment, in my opinion. I think that, you know, this, specifically in aesthetic medicine, I don't know why it's happening, but it's this community over competition thing. Obviously, it goes without being said, but those that just spray that everywhere are probably the ones that are not the ones that are community over competition. So I think, you know, being inclusive and loving is important. And at those conferences, you may not feel that. So I, I encourage you to go, but I encourage you to make um, genuine connections and fortify yourself emotionally, mentally, in yourself to just feel a certain way when you go there. Uh, there's a lot of parties, there's a lot of dinners, there's a lot of education. And what you'll also find is a lot of these conferences have the same speakers. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but you have to figure out in your own mind what you need and what you want. If you've seen these speakers speak a hundred million times, well, maybe that's not the right conference for you to go to, right? Try something new. Try a conference that's a little bit of a different topic. So that's what I think about the larger conferences. Then you get to the smaller group trainings, which I find is a really pretty sweet spot because there are a lot of these. And sometimes you reach out to people individually uh, that don't have necessarily an academy or anything that's so solid or they're, they're advertising for, but maybe they'll want to train you individually on your own without any advertising and be a mentor to you. So these small group trainings I love. I think there's a wide range of them in all different types. There's ultrasound ones, which are really amazing. I think that's a great way to learn ultrasound. There are you know, hands-on injection ones. There are ones that are run by the companies which come with inherent problems, but can also be very beneficial, right? You have to start somewhere. And as I mentioned, it depends on your level of experience. So your reps are there to help you. And if you're brand new, get your rep in there, get some models, get your hands on product, get going. Don't, um, don't avoid that. But later down the road, you know, other private trainings are great. There are some overseas. I say, just stay in the U S to start, <laughs> get, get, get the use of the U S first and then go overseas. There's some great ones over there and amazing providers. And then you get to non-medical conferences, which I personally think are so empowering. And I'll never forget, I went to Sheila Nazarian's Think Big conference right before shutdown in 2020. And it was out in Beverly Hills. And it was a lot of medical aesthetic providers, but it wasn't focusing on aesthetics. It was business, it was empowerment, it was community, and it was so genuine. And I got to meet Kris Jenner, which was really, really cool. Um, but that sticks in my mind because you have to have 
tools in your tool belt and also business skills to be successful if you're a business owner, right? Um, but also just to empower yourself in ways that are different than just the medical side of things. You know, what fuels you? Why are you doing what you do every day? How do you talk to patients? What is body language, communication, um, you know, your emotional health? So all of those things are really important. So I encourage you also to look outside of the medical conferences. Think big. I'm not sure if she's doing anymore. I think it's on demand. Um, Tony Robbins, I haven't been, but I think he's fantastic. Maybe one day I'll go. So conferences like that, I love. AmSpa, Medical Spa Association is doing a women empowerment conference this November. You guys should check that out. So keep in mind that there's things other than just pounding yourself with aesthetics, right? And it gives you a little bit more of a dimensional character and not so uh, medical in focus. So, you know, and then there's all these other things. So I just did a grand rounds for the University of Puerto Rico's dermatology division. And it was really interesting because it was on ultrasound. And those dermatology residents had no experience in ultrasound, zero. And they just wanted to learn about it. And then after I gave my one hour plus talk on ultrasound, uh, one of the attendings was, he spoke up and said, you know, this is fascinating. Thank, thank you so much for your education and information. He said, but it's, it's a little bit terrifying because it is going to become the golden standard and it is going to become mainstay of practice and a requirement essentially in aesthetics. But how do we incorporate that into residency training as physicians, as medical doctors? Dermatologists you have three years of medical dermatology and then you can go into a fellowship of cosmetic dermatology or Mohs surgery or whatever you want to do. And in general, where do you fit that in? He was he was mentioning, how are we going to, you know, is residency just going to be extended? How do we fit the ultrasound in? Is it part of the cosmetic dermatology fellowship? So it's a very interesting shift and we are shifting. Uh, so training is always important. Um, and with ultrasound specifically, I think small group trainings are much better and maximizing your options. So obviously I face it live. This isn't a, you know, you know, for you to, this isn't an advertisement, but obviously that structure I did on purpose so that you have exposure to all of the machines, a ton of faculty all at once. So you don't have to go to multiple different conferences to try to figure out everything. It's all there for you. In one weekend, you get it all. You can decide with all of the companies, which one's right for you get your hands on them and also get cadaver anatomy, which I love. So I tried to build something that didn't exist. That's something that I would want if I was deciding to bring ultrasound into my practice. So think about those things. Think about the future of this field. What do you want to get into now? Ultrasound is definitely going to be the, the wave of the future. It's going to be essential and necessary. So you might as well get on the bus now <laughs> um, and think about what you envision yourself doing in one year, three years, five years, right? Another idea I have is get a business coach. Um, Yvonne Delos is incredible. I know she has an amazing coaching mentorship program. I do private coaching on the side. Um, get somebody that you can ask questions to just to ping them with ideas and maybe you'll get a short answer, maybe you'll get a long answer, but it doesn't hurt to ask. I get questions all of the time on my Instagram and I love hearing from you guys. Sorry if I don't answer every single one, but ask people. Don't feel like you're in a hole, in a little bubble by yourself and you have no one to ask. So business coaching and mentorship is important. Um, so those are my three, 5,000 million cents on what I feel about conferences. Feel free to ask me any other questions. This is just my perception and my vision. Of course, as this field changes, it's going to continue to evolve and change and my opinions will probably change as well. But I hope this helps. Let me know and I can't wait to see you guys next time.